Hello, Internet. Today I've been looking up words. I'm a native English speaker, because I'm from England. Um, I love languages, I love linguistics, I find it fascinating, because there are some beautiful words in other languages which don't have an equivalent in English. You know, you've got these little sets of syllables, really short, that mean so much if they're translated into English. And there's plenty of times when I've been talking to someone, and I've wanted to explain something, and, you know, it's taken forever to explain exactly what I feel. But had I known these words, or had I been able to speak in another language that had them, I would be able to get my point across a lot quicker. And these words also sound really nice to say, I think. I like words that sound nice. Dear Internet, I bestow upon thee the words that I have discovered in my travels across Google. My favourite, favourite word, which is an English one, it's in the English Dictionary but it's not often used, because it's very specific again. Erinaceous, which means to resemble a hedgehog. I love that. You call someone erinaceous, you're telling them they look like a hedgehog. It's brilliant. I want to use it as much as possible. The next one is Calipagian, which I think is from the ancient Greeks. And Calipagian means to possess, you know, a perfect set of buttocks. So if you're calling someone Calipagian, you're telling them they have a damn fine arse. Another one of my favourites, because it sounds adorable, is Glühbirn, which is the German word for light bulb. But it's a compound word, which you get a lot in German, and it's composed of the words glue and burn. And glue means glow, and burn means pear. So Glühbirn literally means glow pair. Sounds like a term of endearment. Ah, my kleine Glühbirn, wo bist du jeden Tag? You know, my little glow pair, how are you today? <laughs> the next one from German is the word Wunderschön. And, you know, I find it difficult to pronounce without sounding enthusiastic. Wunderschön means beautiful or gorgeous, basically. Schlimmasel, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a Yiddish word. And uh, for someone with terrible luck. So if you got struck by lightning, like, you know, ten times in a row, you'd be a schlamazel. One from Spanish. Sussero. Sussero is their word for whisper. And I think it's beautifully onomatopoetic. Because it sounds just like a whisper. Uh, another one from Spanish is madrugada. Now, madrugada is... The time after the bars shut, but before dawn. Well, it, it literally means blue hours, but that's the time I mean. You know when everyone's gone home, even all the, like, the crazy drunks, and no one's got up yet. You know, no one's cleaning the streets or anything. But and there's just a little bit of light. It's not dawn, but it's starting to get a little bit blue. That's my favourite time of day. It's great. Madrugada. A beautiful one here is Mudicha. Mudita? Mudita? Mudicha? Mudicha? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it is a Buddhist idea, and it's the deep joy felt over someone else's success. It's basically the opposite of the German word Schadenfreude, which is, you know, laughing at the expense of someone else's misfortune. But yeah, Mudicha. It sounds nice. A good French one is émute, émute, which means a riot, and it doesn't really sound very violent when you say émute. Someone could be talking to you in French and be like, ah, je commence une émute. You'd be like, oh, that sounds beautiful, if you're an idiot like me and you don't speak French. And then you'd be like, oh, what does it mean? And they'd be like, started a riot. Here's a one from Denmark. Hygge. Hygge. It's a lovely word. Hygge is that feeling you get when, you know, you're completely content. You know, it's a calm state, absent of irritations and annoyances, usually felt around the people you love. And Hygge is associated a lot in Denmark with, you know, Christmas time, when all the family's together. 
and everyone's sort of, sort of content, well fed, warm by the fire. It's a lovely idea. From Gaelic, Gandigao, which is a short, sudden storm. Gandigao. It sounds brilliant to say. Got a lot of alliteration. Oh, here's one from Estonia and it is literally all vowels with accents on until the very last letter. Ue yer, I I can't pronounce it right. I'll let this guy do it. Ue yer. Yeah, but <laughs> it's not just a noise, it means the edge of the fence surrounding the yard. Here's one from Hawaiian, I think. Panapo. Which is two words. Don't care. But it's one meaning I've got I've got here is it's the state of cognitive dissonance you get into when you can't find your keys. But I've got another one which is is scratching your head when you're trying to remember where something is. <laughs> That's what Panapoo is. And also Hawaiian is Maka Pia Pia, which is their word for that weird gunk you get in your eyes when you're just waking up in the morning, and you know, basically eye snot. I think that's what it means. Literally means makapia pia is eye snot. There's one from Turkish, which I don't think I can pronounce. Sumu klu bocak, sumu blu, the means a slug. Yeah, um, but it literally means snotty bug, which is kind of what slugs are. Here's one from Japanese and Korean, Mu, and in Chinese it's Wu, and I love these two because they are, you know, it's the shortest words ever, and they mean nothingness, you know, the absence of anything. Very Zen idea for nothingness. From Indonesian, Mencholek, Mencholek. And it's, you know, it's <laughs> annoying someone by tapping them lightly. You know, tapping someone from behind, you know, like you did as a kid to annoy someone. And then, you know, when you tap them on, when you tap them on one shoulder when you're standing there, you know, and they look that way and, you know, you're, you're the other side of them. That's, that's Menchalek, that little mischievous thing. Oh, here's one I like. Keef, it's Arabic. The state of drowsy contentment you get after smoking narcotics. <laughs> that lovely feeling when you've been smoking weed. It's nice. Cafune, which is Portuguese, uh, meaning the act of fondling someone's hair. You know, tenderly running your fingers through someone's hair. Lovely. Ah, Zaramara. <laughs> it sounds nice. It's Basque for rubbish and garbage. Another beautiful one, it's either pronounced Sodad or Sodaji. It's longing for something that you had, but you've already lost. It's a really sad, melancholy kind of feeling. Mamila Pinata Pai. I love the word Mamila Pinata Pai. It's from the Yagan language, which is now a dead language. But it was spoken in Tierra del Fuego, the very southernmost point of South America. I've never heard the word said properly so I could be pronouncing it wrong but the meaning is quite beautiful. It means that moment or feeling when two people both want to initiate something but neither wants to be the one to start it. It can be perhaps two tribal leaders both wanting to make peace but neither wanting to be the one to begin it or it could be two people at a party wanting to approach each other and neither quite brave enough to make the first move. So yeah, these are the words I found today. I've tried... <laughs> I think I've got, you know, what languages they come from, right? It's, some of them are really hard to Google because um, of all the accents and stuff, or maybe I've got the wrong spelling. And I've taken a bit of liberty when looking up the meanings they might not actually mean that. So if you like know the real meanings behind any of these words, please like yeah, leave me a comment explaining what. And if I w I want to see um, what other people's favourite words are from other languages. 
Um, I know there's a lot more and I want to collect more of them because they are brilliant things. Damn fine arse. Damn fine arse. Damn fine arse. Oh where you are.